Hi all, in this video we'll discuss iteration statements that were introduced in this section, uh, namely the for, while, and do while loops. One key concept when working with loops is to understand that all of the loop types for, while, and do while have four common elements. Although their order and their location uh, of these common elements, they differ from loop to loop, um, loop to loop type they do always include each of these four elements. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about these four elements. So the first thing that we have is the counter variable declaration and initialization. So what this does is it first declares our counter variable and it sets that variable's start value, okay? Next common element we have is the condition statement and the condition statement tests the value of the variable against something and it determines whether the loop should be activated or if it should be skipped. If the condition statement tests true, then the, the loop is activated. If the condition statement tests false, the loop is skipped and any Java programming that's listed after the loop is then processed, okay? It's important to understand we have to be really careful when we create our condition statements. Um, we have to make sure that the logic of the condition statement is correct, or what we could do is create infinite loops. And we'll talk more about infinite loops in a moment. Next we have, the next common element we have is con uh, counter modification. And the counter is used to adjust, the, or the counter modification is used to adjust the value of the counter variable. So this is necessary so that eventually the condition statement will test to false and the loop will stop. Counters are often increased by the uh, a value of one, um, but you can, or decreased by the value of one, but you can set the counters, uh, you know, modification to whatever you need for your program. Finally, we have the code block, and this is the block of Java code that will be run if that condition statement tests true. Now, if that condition statement tests false, that's what we skip. We skip the code block and we move on to whatever is listed below it. Now that we understand the four common elements of our loops, we're going to take a look at um, for loops. We're going to explore them. So here's an example of a for loop. Notice the for uh, keyword here is highlighted in orange, and it tells the compiler that we're going to be using a for loop. So one thing to note is the for loop is a really clean loop and it has all of its, um, the statements necessary uh, for the loop, you know, are listed within the parentheses, okay? Um, and then it has below the parentheses, below all those elements, then we see the, the code block. Okay, now let's review how the column, common elements apply to this for loop. Um, so first we have our counter variable and declaration. It's listed here in highlighted in orange. It's the first thing listed in our parentheses. Um, and in this we have, of course, where the variable i has been declared and its initialization has been set to one. Okay, the second con common element found in this for example is the condition statement. In our example, the condition statement is i is less than or equal to 20. So if i is less than or equal to 20, the for loop will be processed or worked through. Um, if i is greater than 20, the for loop is skipped entirely. It's important to note that the condition statement is always a Boolean condition that tests whether the condition is true or false. The next common element that we have highlighted here is the counter modification statement. The counter modification statement is used to update the value of our variable so that we can test it against our condition statement again a second time or a third time or how many other times we've gone through our loop. In our example, I++ here highlighted means that each iteration or each pass through the loop, I will be incremented by one. Uh, typically in a for loop, i is incremented by one, but like I said, that does not always have to be the case. It can be adjusted, that the modification can be adjusted to fit your needs. Okay, so when we talk about um, counter modification, we, we see three basic types of modifying. The first one is the basic increment or decrement statement where it's i++ or i minus minus. 
So I plus plus is going to increase our counter by one, or actually not I plus plus, plus plus is going to increment our counter by one. In this instance, I just happens to be our variable, okay? So plus plus increments it by one, minus minus increments it by one, or decrements it by one, so subtracts one from it. Um, then we can also use compound operators that we learned in a previous module, okay? And then we can use a more a longer version, which I call variable equals variable plus modifier. So in this instance, we have i is equal to i plus 8. Um, you can use that by, by no means can you not use that, but we can easily convert i equals i plus 8 into a compound, mod, uh, compound operator. So, but these are the three uh, ways that you have to modify your counter. Okay, so the last common element that we have here highlighted is the code block. Um, this is the bit of program written between the loops, um, the for loops curly brackets. And in our example, the system out print statement will print the current value of i followed by a blank space. So if we were to add this for loop to a properly formatted main, math, main method uh, within a class, our output would look like this. A string of values starting or initialized at 1 and being increased by 1 to 20 to include 20 um, with a space in between. Okay, And all the values are printed on one line because we're using a print statement, not a print ln statement. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a common technique called tracing a loop. Okay, In this instance, we're going to trace our for loop. So we have uh, our for loop is slightly different. In this one, we have a for loop that um, has a counter variable i that has been declared and initialized to 1. We have a condition statement that is where i is less than or equal to 5. The code block is going to run. Um, we have an uh, counter modification statement that it will increase our counter variable i by one after each uh, iteration. And then we have our code block. And within our code block, what we have is we have a second variable that I call i square, and it is based on the value of i times i. It is i squared, okay? So then once we have, after we have created, figured out what i square is, the value for i square is, then we uh, have a print statement that says i, the value of i plus, or no, the, the value of i times the value of i is i squared. Okay. So what I like to do in these statements is I like to create a t-chart and I like to look at what is my value uh, for i in this instance. And then if there are any other variables that are based on i through each iteration, I want to know what does that variable look like through each iteration, okay? So I've got this t-chart here. And so what I have here is it says, in our first go through, i is equal to one. That is our start or our initialized variable value is one. So then we, we say, okay, is i less than or equal to five? Is one less than or equal to five? Yes, that's true. So since it's true, we're gonna jump down into the code block and we're going to figure out our value for i squared. And our value for i squared is i times i, or 1 times 1, which is 1. So I'm going to put here down in our t uh, chart, I have where i is 1, i squared is 1. So then next in the code block, we have a system print statement that says the value of i times the value of i is the value of i squared. So it is a print statement, and it's going to be, each statement's going to be on its own line. So it says 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so now with that, we jump back up to this last element within our, our parentheses, the I++, so the counter modification statement. Okay, so now we have that, that increment statement, I++, I was 1, we increment it by 1, and so now I is equal to 2. So we no longer have to look at this first element inside the parentheses, the, the in i equals 1, that's kind of skipped. That was just for declaring the variable and initializing it. After we start to work through the loop and increment, we no longer have to look at that, okay? So i is now 2, 
And so we're going to test our condition statement. So i is less than or equal to 5. Well, we replace the i with 2. 2 is less than or equal to 5. That is true. We're going to jump down into the code block and figure out our new value for i squared, which is equal to i times i, or in this instance, 2 times 2. So where i is 2, i squared is 4. So then we have a print statement that says the value of i times the value of i, or rather the current value of i times the current value of i is the current value of i squared. So now we see a new print statement is then put on the screen that below our previous one that says 2 times 2 is 4. With that done, we come to the end of our code block. It jumps us back up to the parentheses of the for statement, and we increment our counter variable from 2 to 3. Now with our counter variable incremented to 3, we go ahead and test the condition statement again. i is less than or equal to 5. We replace i with 3. 3 is less than or equal to 5. That's true. So we're going to jump down into the code block. And we're going to calculate the new value of i squared based on our current value of i, which is 3. So our new value of i squared is 3 times 3. So where i is 3 in our t chart here, where i is 3, i squared is 9. Then we have our system print statement, which says the current value of i times the current value of i is the current value of i squared. So the current value of i is 3, and our current value of i squared is 9. So our print statement is 3 times 3 is 9. With that, we reach the end of the code block. i is then incremented, so i goes from 3 to 4. And now with our counter variable i being incremented to 4, we once again test our condition statement. i is less than or equal to 5. So we replace i with 4. 4 is less than or equal to 5 is true. So that's going to bump us down into the code block. So we create, so we go in and we evaluate the new value for i square, where i is 4. So i square is now 4 times 4, or 16. So you notice we add that in our t chart. So where i is 4, i square is 16. So then I have this print system print statement that says the current value of i times the current value of i is the current value of i square, or rather, 4 times 4 is 16. With that, once again, we come to the end of the code block. Our, our i value is incremented from 4 to 5. Okay, so our, our i value has been incremented from 4 to 5. We test that um, the condition statement again. i is less than or equal to 5. So we replace i with 5. 5 is less than or equal to 5. That is true. That pushes us down into the code block. We evaluate our new i square variable based on the change made to i. So i square is now the new valuable value of i times i, or i square is now 5 times 5. So in our t chart, you see where i is 5, i square is 25. So then we have a, a system out um, statement, a print statement that says the current value of i times the current value of i is the current value of i square. So we print 5 times 5 is 25. Okay. One thing to note, we only have two variables. We have i and we have i square. That's why we only have two columns in our t chart. If you have multiple variables that are changing based on your counter variable, you're just going to want to add another column for them. Okay, because sometimes you can get a pretty convoluted uh, loop statement. So you want to make sure that you're tracking uh, which, how each of the variables is changing each iteration. So with that, having printed that, um, that statement to the screen, we come to the end of the code block. Our uh, counter variable has now been increased again by 1 from 5 to 6. With that, we jump back up to that condition statement and we test it again, uh, where i is uh, less than or equal to 5. We replace i with 6. So 6 is less than or equal to 5. That's false. So with that, we are done. We skip the code block and we move on to whatever is listed after the for loop. Okay, so that's how we trace a for loop. So now that we have a little understanding about how a for loop works, we're going to take a look at a critical thinking question. And this uh, critical thinking question is actually listed in your video review. So be sure to um, take a look at this. So I'm going to read this. It says, consider the for loop example below. 
rewrite the for loop statement to only print the even numbers from 1 to 20 and be sure to use correct syntax. So would you believe me if I told you the only modifications that you needed to do to make this for loop work as you were as you were asked in the critical thinking um, 